previously on Soul Food. You and I have known each other for a very long time. We've gone to frat parties together and studied for the bar together and we came to this firm together. Was your pops washing like this or was he washing like this? Like this. Man, your pops was jacking off. Look, I got real good. If some shit goes down, I'll tell you what to do with it. What kind of shit? Just say this insurance for the both of us. What the fuck does the Ivy League educated drug dealer want with his former runner? Jack owes some people a great deal of money. They want it yesterday. I'm staying at the Seahorse Motel. Yo, Jack. Jack, you in here? No matter what we're doing, if Reggie sees some cute girl, he has to try to get with him. Oh, hello, ladies. I was wondering, like, I saw y'all. Y'all look so beautiful. Again. <laughs> what if I can give y'all a call? And he ain't gonna get nothing from Tisha. <laughs> I know. How's that sound? Well, I would need a phone number. Reggie. To me, being around being girls has too many rules. If they hit you, you can't hit them back. If they drop their books, you gotta pick them up. Even though it's not your fault, they're too weak to carry stuff. Come on, Reggie, throw the ball. Thank you. <laughs> Man, what are you doing? He know I always gotta make time for the honeys. Oh, so your Keisha gave you her number, right? Let me see, yeah? No, she wanted me, but I was checking her friend. She said to call tonight between 7 and 8, hang up, then call back in two minutes. Like I said, too many rules. Man, I'm not out here to watch you get embarrassed by some girls. Embarrassed? At least I get some play. You would, too, if you quit being such a mama's boy. Man, I get play, OK? From who? He don't get nothing. I know he don't, because if he did, check this out. He had one of these. Hey, where'd you get that? My brother gave it to me after he got his girlfriend pregnant. For real? You might just want to start carrying one of these just in case one of them lakeside preppy girls decide to throw you something. How you know they haven't all right? All right, then. So take one of these Jimmy hats. Like my brother says, you either get the kitty cat or you are a kitty cat. Man, I ain't no kitty cat. Then stop Why? acting like one and take it. Let's go. Chicago Police Department. Jack Van Adams, please. One moment. You reached Detective Van Adams at the Jack Lynn, on Grace call, she says she hasn't heard from you in days. When you get this message, reach out to her so she'll quit worrying. No need to call me back. What's up, Tim? Thanks for coming down. What's up? Thanks for being late. Gave me a chance to eat a full plate of this fat and shit I know I had no business with. So all of a sudden, you health conscious? It's not that. It's just my cholesterol is like 260, and I ain't trying to croak. You know what I'm saying. Listen, I'm looking for Jack. You laying low at your crib? I ain't seen Jack. My family's looking for him, and y'all been boys since forever. Thought you might know something. Look, Jack's been my road dog since we were 14, but he finally got too shady even for my black ass. I had to cut him loose, and I suggest you do the same. I already did. I still got to find him. Just can't sit around while my aunt worries. 
tell your family don't waste their worries on Jack. He's probably just working undercover. Man, I didn't think about that. If I was you, I'd leave Jack in whatever hole he fell into. I'm out. Even if we could find it, a dissenting opinion on a 30-year-old case isn't precedent. It's history. No judge would look at it twice. Hey, I didn't make partner citing useless case law. <sighs> now, the judge in our case clerked for that dissenting judge. How come I can't find it? It was Brooks versus Marciano. No, no, that was a wrongful termination case. Brooks versus Marciano. Marciano. Here it is. Brooks versus Marciano. <laughs> Obviously up on every labor case in the last 20 years, so why am I wasting my Saturday here helping you? For bad Thai food and good company. Hmm? Right. Just like in law school. Well, no. In Northwestern, there would have been bimbos knocking at the door every five minutes asking if you could come out and play. I was tutoring undergrads. And what exactly were you teaching them? Well, somebody had to have some fun, otherwise we'd have both been cranky all the time. I wasn't cranky. I was focused. <sighs> and I was going through my first divorce. Yeah, for a minute I didn't think you were going to make it there. I wouldn't have if I didn't have you to lean on. Careful now. You're treading dangerously close to sentimentality. Go to hell, Brian. There's the Terry Joseph I know and love. You, you want some more iced tea? Thank you. Want me to get that? Oh, would you, if you don't mind? Hey, hey how are Ryan, you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, good. Let me see that little sweet. <laughs> Mall today anyway. I'll take it to your car. What? You putting us out already? Well, Maxine, I got a lot of work to do. I... You know, we'll get back to it. I'll help Maxine out. Oh, good. Damien, know you got this cutie in your house on a Saturday? Uh, bye, Maxine. <laughs> bye. So when are you getting married, Brian? Married? Mm-hmm. Maybe. <laughs> something and I
Joe! Somebody's at the door, sister! Mama Joe ain't here, Uncle Pete. I'll get it. Pete, you look familiar, boy. Whose child are you? I'm Lem Bird's husband. Hmm. Funny shaped head. I gotta get the door, Uncle <laughs> Pete. Lem Van Adams? Yeah. Detective Craig Quinn, this is Detective Chase. Mind if we come in? You talk right here. You've been asking a lot of people about the whereabouts of Jack Van Adams. Some of those people we know. Why do you need to find him? He's my cousin. When was the last time you saw or heard from him? It's been a while. Could you be a little more specific? I wish I could. When was the last time Jack helped you get work moving stolen goods? I don't know. Well, here's what we know. Detective Jack Van Adams is missing. You were one of the last people he was seen with. So you gotta know where he is. You got the wrong person. Oh. You decide you're the right person. Give us a call. As per our conversation, I'm enclosing the following documents for us. You busy? I can come back. Well, you're already here. Have you had a chance to look at the Beale television case yet? Yeah, I reviewed it last night. And what are your thoughts? I, I haven't figured out how I want to proceed yet. Well, if you need a hand, well, I can... I don't think I can handle it. Anything else? Brian, you came to see me. Right. Terry, about what you saw last night, I didn't mean for you to walk in on that. I thought the door was locked, and, well, that's the first time we've ever done it. Uh, well, that, here. Ryan, I'm your friend, not your mother. Whatever you do with your personal life is your business. Yeah, but where I did it kind of made it your business. Well, you can consider what I saw unseen. Thank you. How many times have you tell this boy, empty your pockets? This like his daddy. like this and I don't know if I should be glad that at least he was smart enough to protect himself or, or, or wring his little neck for even thinking about sex <sighs> say something y'all that pacing is making my head hurt I wonder which one of them little fast ass little girls has got my baby's nose wide open well first of all your baby is 12 years old besides you don't even know if he's doing anything with the condoms it was open. Well, what does Kenny have to say about all this? I haven't told him yet. Well, maybe you should. Let him give him one of these safe sex talks. Although neither of you seem to believe in him much. <laughs> that's right. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's supposed to be funny. Uh-huh. <laughs> Maxine, don't... J.J. You know, this little man is going through more diapers than we can keep up with. You do the honors. Oh, <laughs> oh Lem. Was everything okay here today? Yeah, why? Because Miss Dorsey, you know, from next door, she said she saw the police here. Oh, yeah, they just wanted to ask me some questions. About? Oh, 
They were looking for Jack and heard I was looking for him, too. Uh, Jack is still missing in action? Yeah. And they made it sound like he ran off somewhere. His wife, my Aunt Grace, ringing the phone off the hook, wondering if I seen him. Have you seen him? Why are you gonna ask me if I... Bird, I ain't had nothing to do with Jack disappearing. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I mean, because I told you about him hitting on me, and... You said you wouldn't do anything crazy. And I didn't. All right. Look, I know you don't want your aunt to worry, but I think the best thing for us to do right now is just let the police deal with Jack's twisted ass. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Hey, baby girl. Hi. Mm -hmm. I need to talk to you. Yeah, your lips feel like they'd rather be talked to than kissed. Uh, what's up? I found this in your son's pocket. Wow. Wow is right, Kenny. But I was hoping you'd have a lot more to say than that. <laughs> Look at that. Damn. Uh, hey. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. You're not upset about this? Just will you keep your voice down? That mod is probably just experimenting. You know, this is natural. You know, men do this all the time. I mean, it's, I remember you used to have this in your wallet and keep it in there forever. We need to take this seriously, Kenny. Okay. Ahmad is not a man, he's a boy. Okay, okay. Now, I will talk to him in the morning, all right? Okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay. What you gonna say? I'll say the right thing. Hmm? Now look, don't worry, baby. It's okay. All right? Okay. Son. Hey, Dad. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I need to talk to you about something. <clears throat> and you got a girlfriend. No. Well, that's good. That's good. I mean, I mean, not so much that it's it's good. I mean, you don't, so you probably Dad, wouldn't have any. I'm gonna be late for the bus. <gasps> Ahmad, you're uh. Your mother found a little something, something in your, your your pocket yesterday. Something you've been carrying around. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Now, think about it before you answer that question. I only wanted to see what it looked like. And? And nothing. I didn't do anything with it. Come here. What's up? Messing around with the girls, yeah. I mean, you know, sexually, and, and... no. All right. Thinking about it, Dad. Okay. All right. You know, um, you know, I need to to talk to you, you know, about something, and I I, I don't want you to ever forget it. You know, All right? You know, there's one rule when it comes to having safe sex. You know what it is? The only safe sex is no sex. Exactly. That, that's right. That's right. See? Good. good. Come here. You got it. See? You know? And, you know? and in the meantime, you want to carry rubbers around, don't ever, I mean, never let your mama know where you're hiding them. All right. She'll kill both of us. <laughs> Five copies of these. Sure, I'll take care of that. And send them off. I'll put it on your desk when I'm done. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Terry? 
Yes. Got a second? Thanks. So what can I do for you? I wanted to discuss regarding the other night. I want to clear the air. Brian already did. He told me that the two of you spoke, but... Mm -hmm. Terry, I admire you very much. I respect you even more. You know, I don't think this could be any more difficult. Things could always be more difficult. Yeah, I guess they can. I just want you to know that when I came to Green Norris, I had no intention of ending up in a relationship with my boss. Hmm. Uh, but Brian's a great guy. Brian and I have been friends for a long time. I know what a great guy he is. I guess that's true. I just don't know how all this happened. Well, sure you do. We're working on a case together. And late nights become working dinners, and then working dinners become just dinners. And then dinners lead to you eating yours while straddling Brian on the conference table. I've worked very hard to get here, and my position at this firm is very important to me. Is it? Yes, it is. So, I'm wondering... Woman to woman, what do you think I should do now? I wish you would have asked my advice before you found yourself in this situation. Because then I could have told you how many times my male colleagues have come on to me. And how I knew it would be political suicide if I took them up on it, no matter what great guys they were. And I could have told you that every time a female gets involved in a sexual liaison with her boss, she blows it for every woman who was working so damn hard to be taken seriously. So please, don't do it. But that would have been my advice before you got involved with Brian. Now I have no idea what you should do. Okay. Well, I guess that's clear. Excuse me. Yes, we'd like to speak to Tracy Van Adams. I'm Tracy Van Adams. Detective Craig Quinn, Chicago Police Department. This is Detective Chase. You were at my house yesterday. Yes, we were. We'd like to ask you a few questions about Jack Van Adams. Didn't my husband tell you everything you knew? Is there some place we can sit down? I'm sorry, I have a business to run. Yes, you do. It's a shame your husband might cause you to lose it. What is that supposed to mean? Did you know your husband spent a lot of time with Jack right before his disappearance? Families do that. Spend time together. You know, Mrs. Van Adams, your sarcasm is a little insulting. And that's your way of diverting attention away from the fact that you know all about your husband's illegal activity. It ain't working. You know, I'm beginning to feel a little insulted myself. So unless you think you're going to find Jack in this shop, I got to get back to work. You have a nice day, Mrs. Van Adams. We'll be in touch. So, you want to hear the latest gossip? You know I don't listen to gossip. Well, you want to hear this. Lori County thinks that Brian Joan, and... I said I didn't want to hear it. Huh. I'd be extremely disappointed to find out that my secretary is the one spreading it. Is that clear? Yes, I'll type this up right away. I thought you said you weren't going to get involved. I'm fine. How are you? Heather told me she spoke with you. And suddenly something she was fine with has her in hysterics. She came to me. I told you I wasn't going to say anything, and I haven't. However, my secretary has just offered to share some gossip with me. Do you want to take a stab at the subject? wasn't about Heather and me. Brian, please, come on. We've been friends too long. You know how this works. You're a male, and your male colleagues find out about this. You're going to get a wink and a pat on the back. Heather is going to be branded your plaything. Not a bright young attorney who fell for the wrong guy. What, so now I'm the wrong guy? You're the wrong guy to be acting like the injured party. Now, if anyone gets hurt, it won't be the smart, handsome junior partner who plays golf with the big wigs every Saturday. What the hell's gotten into you? Why is this suddenly so personal? It's not sudden. I felt like this the moment I saw you two on the table. Now, I've decided to mind my business, but it has been very difficult with you and Heather running in and out of my office all day. Yes. 
Brian. Sorry to interrupt. Um, Mr. Green is waiting for you, Brian. You better run along. He probably wants to discuss tea off time with you. Think about that. Ma'am, I do hope meeting here was complete happenstance. You seen Jack? Brother, I told you. I don't know where your trifling cousin is. But if you happen to catch up with him, let him know to keep up this invisible man routine he's got going. It's good. Now, I try to stay out of the beef between you and Jack, but my family keeps calling me. The cops think I know something, and trust me, I ain't going down for nobody else's shady shit. So Jack's world is finally starting to fall apart. Look, look do yourself a favor and tell the cops what they want to know and eradicate this virus named Jack Van Adams. You know what I think? Hmm. I think your weasel ass knows exactly where Jack is, but you enjoy this fuck with Lem's head bullshit too much to tell me what you know. Well, with that, my weasel ass has to go. You know, I got people to see. Crooked cops to kill. Hey. Hi. I got your page, you all right? No, I'm not. Two detectives came by here today asking questions about Jack. I am a nervous wreck. I cannot have this happening around here. Now, what the hell is going on? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. Lem, we've been through a lot. You're working now, and things are finally starting to fall into place. And I will not build my future on a lie. So just tell me the truth. Do you have something illegal going on with Jack? I don't have shit going on with Jack. Nothing whatsoever. Jack is missing, and the cops are acting like he has something to do with it. Yesterday, two detectives came by the house and questioned him. This morning, they came by the shop and had this attitude like I was hiding something. Well, can they do that? Well, yeah, they can certainly ask questions, but it sounds to me like they were trying to intimidate you. Yeah, well, it worked. Well, what does Lem have to say for himself? Lem doesn't have anything to say for himself, Terry. He says he doesn't know anything about it, and I believe him. I was just asking. Well, from what you told us about Jack, it's not like he's exactly a boy scout. You know, tell me what happened to him. Yeah, well, whatever it is, I don't need to have the cops thinking my husband is all wrapped up in it. Mm. Well, don't worry. I'll, I'll talk to my DA friend who works out of Jack's precinct a lot, see what I can find out. Terry, thank you. I owe you. Well, you can pay me back by letting me keep my nephew on Saturday. <laughs> it's all yours. You want mine? I need another one. For what? To put my wallet. Oh, so all you do is put it in your wallet. <laughs> Come on, man. You know I use them. That's why I need another one. Come on, give it back. I need it. I used it. You did? When you used it? The other day. He probably used it on one of the rich lakeside girls. <laughs> <laughs> it was Keisha. Keisha? Ah, uh, Keisha, you got some from Keisha? Yep. And I bought another box of rubber soup. You lying. No, I'm not. Hey! Okay, fine. Look, if you got some, what it look like? Man, it was different from the books. Different from the books, how? Yeah, how? Man, I don't know. I was sticking my thing in there. I wasn't looking at it. Well, then, man, I gotta give it up. I gotta give you a prop, yo. 
He got some from Keisha. Yeah, Keisha yeah, Thomas. Yeah, yeah. I guess I gotta give you a prop. Sure do. Yeah, I guess you do. already in motion. I'm only here to discuss one thing with you, and that's my money. It's all here. 12,000. Count it if you want. When's the trial? Starts on the 21st. That gives you less than a week to make sure Hernandez doesn't take the stand. It's a done deal. He'll be out of the way by tomorrow night. I'm heading over to Vernon Street, Joe. Ain't nobody on Vernon Street no more. Lucky Charlie's going to the horses. I'm going with him. I can't let you go, Uncle Pete. Maybe tomorrow. Hey. Oh, boy. Thank you. No problem. Kenny, mm -hmm. you never told me what happened with you and Ahmad. What do you mean? You were supposed to talk to him about the condom. Oh, well, that's all taken care of, baby. You sure about that? Oh, I'm sure. Come with me. Okay. Uh, Max, what are you doing? Showing you what your son's been up to. Wait, what? Is, and, and this is supposed to prove something? It proves you didn't do what you said. Look, you asked me to talk to him, and that's what I did. And then what happened? You took him down to the drugstore to get some more? Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not even the point here. Why are you snooping through the boys' things? I knew I should have handled this my damn self. You know, wait a minute. What, what are you trying to say? That I don't know how to talk to my son? Here's the answer to that. Uh, you know what? I am tired of this, Maxine. Now, the boy is 12 years old. When I was his age, I carried condoms around in my wallet for years before I even know what to do with them. And it's just a rite of passage, all right? Oh, oh, so this is just a man thing? You know what? I didn't want to go there, but yes, it is, Maxine. And you couldn't possibly understand. Carrying a condom in his pocket means he is ready to screw. I don't need a dick to understand that. Listen to me. These give him opportunity. They put the idea in his head. That scares me. Well, it shouldn't. He's just being a normal boy. Oh, so when Kelly gets old enough to carry around birth control pills in her purse, well, that means she's just being a normal girl? What? Yeah, if I let's go tell her right now, it's okay. I mean, she's four. You know what? This is ridiculous. No, Kenny, you acting like it's no big deal that your child, even your male child, is interested in having sex is ridiculous. <laughs> Smokey, Glamour, you're ruining my lunch break. And you're definitely getting a little tenacious for my tastes. I just need you to listen to these tapes and tell me what you think. I've seen a lot of evidence disappear. Sometimes people disappear with it. I don't have time to play name that assassin. What's your point? Point one, I got some shit on some dirty cops. Point two, I'll share these tapes with you if you help me find Jack. Well, that's an interesting proposition. Dirty cops are a good investment. Not Dow Jones good, but they tend to not mind paying for the privilege of keeping their dirty little secrets secret. I ain't getting into all that. I'll see what I can find out. No promises. And I need it. STDs is an official abbreviation for sexual transmitted diseases. Name three such STDs. Syphilis, herpes, and... Which simplex? Simplex two. Good. 
and gonorrhea. Very good. Oh, 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 Max, what the hell are you doing? What you should have done when I asked you to talk to your son. I'm educating him. Now, draw a picture of the male genitalia on one side of the paper and the female genitalia on the other, and label each part by its biological and popular street name. Ahmad. Okay. Oh, you know, what's the, the purpose of this little exercise? If he knows the proper and the slang name for those organs, no matter what those grown acting kids are talking about, he'll be informed. You do know you lost it, don't you? Kenny, I would appreciate it if you do not say that kind of mess in front of our son. Okay, you're right. Ahmad, go to your room. Sit down, Ahmad. Go. Boy, what's wrong with you? Don't, don't you hear me talking to you? The only reason I did not stop him is that I did not want to humiliate him any more than you already did. Me? Humiliate him? Uh, you got him trapped in, in boot camp with this 1970s health ed book, and I'm humiliating him? These are my books from junior high school, Kenny. And at least I'm trying to offer him some kind of information. You are making a big deal out of nothing. All right, now, you, you're going to keep acting like this. You're going to make him think that he's some freak. Kenny, I have done nothing but raise that boy for the last 12 years. Now, you trying to tell me I can't even do that? Leave it alone, Maxine. Just leave the boy alone. Okay. I will leave it alone and let you handle it or not handle it any way you want. Thank you. One of those things, and I hate to see her go, but it's just not a good fit. Smaller firm, that's what she needs. And there's no doubt, though, that Heather's a good lawyer. Good afternoon, Mr. Green. Hi, Terry. Brian. The usual. Hey, kiddo. Did you quit? Gave my notice today. Brian and I agreed it's best for me to leave. I've already had a few offers. Everybody wants an attorney who used to practice at Green Norris. I guess they do. Brian, can I talk to you in my office, please? Hang on to that for me. Yeah, I got it. You convinced her to quit? Heather and I agreed it would be best if she left. Oh, you agreed? The partner and the first-year associate conferred like equals and agreed? You convinced the woman to disregard her future the way you have. Hey, I'm not the one who convinced her that her future didn't look so bright. Don't you dare act like this is my fault. I'm not the one that was on the table with her. And I never told her that she should leave. I have a right to protect myself here, OK? I've been at this firm for seven years. I've invested late nights, weekends, never once taken a vacation. And I'm taking the time to mentor a friend I went to law school with to make sure she makes partner, too. And your friend will make partner, Brian, because she's smart enough to know that if she did the same shit that her mentor did, she could forget about ever being promoted. Oh, that's right. You're too smart to do anything to jeopardize your run at making partner. Oh, by the way, does your delivery guy friend know that? What delivery guy? What are you talking about? I'm talking about the courier, the one that runs around here making all the secretaries hot and bothered. What's his name? Damon? I've seen you flirt with him. And believe me, if you looked at me the way I've seen you look at him, I would definitely think that there was some fun on the conference table in store for me. Who the hell do you think you are? Who the hell are you? The Terry Joseph I used to know would never jeopardize making partner, getting the corner office in five years, and getting her name on the letterhead in ten years just to flirt with the guy who delivers the overnight express. And the Brian Tedro I used to know would never fuck a young associate out of a career and take no responsibility for it. You know what? I'm gonna leave now. This conversation's about to go someplace we can't come back from. It's funny how everything changes when you tell a really big lie that gets you much respect from your homies. You feel like the man. You feel like the world is yours. Hey, 
Keisha? Ah. Oh, what'd you do that for? Ah. <laughs> what'd you do that for? Oh. Oh. Hey, yo, maybe she Come wanted on. you to keep it a secret. Keep what a secret? That she gave you some. Man, I only told you and Reggie. Oh, I don't I, know. I might have said... Man, what'd you say? I, I, was, I, I just thought since she gave you something, I'd ask if she could give me something, too. Man, boo. Man, I'm sorry. Did you call her? My brother said if you don't call after, they get mad. Baby, what happened? I'm all right. Come here. Come here. Oh, hold your head back. Who did this to you? Nobody. You better tell me what happened. Here, hold this. Huh? Nothing. Okay. It's bad enough you got a bloody nose. You want a sore behind to go with it, too? Here, put this on your nose. The truth, please. Keisha Thomas hit me for lying on me. Well, what kind of lie did you tell? A stupid one. About something that didn't happen. Well, what did happen between you and Keisha? Nothing. I never even said hi to her before today. Well, you know what you gotta do, don't you? Apologize. Mm-hmm. And tell my friends the truth. That's the part that's not gonna be easy. But I bet you're gonna do it. That's what makes you a man, Ahmad. Not some little thing you carry around in your pocket. Oh, Keisha doesn't hit me again when I say I'm sorry. Well, if she does, you better not hit her back. You know the rules. Now, boys don't hit girls, I know. Been telling me forever. I have, haven't I? Thanks, Mom. No rule. Stay away from girls forever. Because no way can I tell my boys that I lied. Hey. Terry, why do you have a bird it's open sign on your front door? Because it is open. And I had to finish getting Jay's stuff out for our day together. Well, luckily I'm bird. That's not safe. I know you know that. Okay, Mama. Talk to my friend, DA. Father called back. What'd he say? He had to protect his job, so he couldn't tell me if they were investigating Lem, but he said that we shouldn't worry. Oh, good. What's good, Bird? That they haven't found anything on Lem or that they haven't caught him yet. What are you talking about? I just think it's crazy for us to assume that he's completely innocent throughout all this. Oh, brother, here we go. No, Bird, we're not going anywhere. And neither is this conversation. Why do you have to act like you were born yesterday and believe everything that comes out of Lem's mouth? Because I do believe everything that comes out of his mouth. If I didn't, it would mean I don't trust him. And if I didn't trust him, I couldn't live with him. And Terry, I love Lem too much to even think about living without him. Oh, I forgot. I bought Jeremiah a new blanket. It's beautiful. Have a great day. Little Jay, did you miss your auntie? Did you miss your auntie? You find Jack? We think so. State found his truck. It's out of our jurisdiction, but we got a call asking for someone from our precinct to identify the body, notify the family. We thought you might want to know. Let me get my keys. I want you to take a look at something in the back of Jack's truck. Smokey. What the fuck? Some mornings you can just tell. There's gonna be one of them days. Who the hell is Jack? Oh, you really are. 
out in the dark on this, aren't you? I told you when you first came to my house, I didn't know nothing. So you did. What's up, cousin? Tell my mom I'm all right. 